Hi, thank you. Thanks, Wan Chen, and uh, also thanks to uh, Jamie and Jingle for organizing this seminar. Uh, as Wan Chen mentioned, I'm currently a research fellow at Macquarie Uni. Uh, the fellowship project is on covered communication, which is also the topic I will cover today. Uh, this seminar is basically uh, based on our recently published magazine article, uh, where the co-authors are Sean, uh, who is giving a seminar soon, and also Dr. Jin Song Hu and Professor Stephen Hanley. Uh, due to the time limitation, I will not cover many technical details today, but I'll try to mention three main research directions in the context of covered communication. So Gaussian signaling, uh, multi-hole covered communication, and also the uh, intelligent reflection surface aided covered communication. So, so first is some background information. So in covered communication, the transmitter, which is Edis, try to communicate with Bob Carpetly uh, means she does not prefer her communication or her transmission to be detected by another receiver. We normally call it uh, a voting really. So correspondingly, we have uh, two channels here. One is the communication channel from Alice to Bob. The other one is the, we call it the detection channel from Alice to Willie. Uh, in the context of covered communication, uh, normally we have uh, three different levels of the coveredness. The first one is to hide Alice's transmission while the existence of Alice and Bob is publicly known. Uh, the second one is try to hide Alice and her transmission, which means uh, hide the transmitter. And the third one is try to hide everything uh, in order to achieve the final goal of covered communication, which is to establish shadow and uh, secure wireless networks. Uh, Next, I try to clarify some differences between the covered communication, also get a name, low probability of detection communication uh, and the physical air security. So we can generally, we can see the covered communication is uh, mainly on privacy. So, but physical air security, of course, on security. So the main difference lies uh, in covered communication, the third party really uh, try to decide whether uh, Alice is transmitting or not. But in physical air security, the if thropper try to, to decode or to understand what does Alice transmit. So one is the transmission action, the other is the communication content. So due to this difference, the optimization frameworks, uh, performance metrics, also the design principles are uh, very different in these two contexts. Let's go to the next one. So why do we need uh, covered communication? I list some application uh, scenarios here, but I basically I will use the telehealth monitoring to briefly discuss the motivation here. So in this scenario, if we only protect the communication content, that may not be enough because the periodical transmission of the medical devices may expose the existence of the device and start then to violate the, the privacy of the patient to say, okay, these guys may know uh, she's a patient. Also, you, uh, you can think about the currently, I, I did an update here, the uh, coronavirus app in currently used in Australia. We can turn the course around to ask, could we uh, do what the, uh, the coronavirus thief does without the app? I think technically we can do it, but we should not do it according to the law of, yeah. So this is the fundamental system model for covered communication. Uh, first is the communication model from NS to Bob. I think most of us is familiar with this model. So I will not give too much details here. I will focus on the binary hybrid testing at really. So uh, under the non hybrid disk where Alice is not transmitting. So uh, really receive this the noise only, but and the alternative hard disk uh, where it is, is transmitting. So we really received both the transmitting signal and also the noise. So based on this received signal, so we really try to decide whether it is, com it, it is from the non hard disk or the alternative hard disk and then try to see whether it is, does transmit or not. Uh, the intuitive or the fundamental detection performance is the detection error probability, which is alpha plus beta. 
So alpha is the false positive rate, which is the probability really decides Alice is transmitting while she is not. And also beta is the missed detection rate, which is the probability really missed uh, Alice's transmission. If, if really is randomly guessing without uh, receive anything, so the detection error probability will be close to one, and that's why the fundamental correctness constraint is require the minimum detection error probabilities uh, greater or equal to one minus epsilon. Uh, alternatively, based on this equation between the minimum detection error probability and the total variation between the uh, two likelihood functions and then the non hypothesis and alternative hypothesis, we have uh, we can use another uh, coverageness constraint, which is the which is the constraint based on the total variation. So we can inter interpret the total variation as a difference metric for the two likelihood functions. If the difference is larger, the detection error probability will be smaller because it becomes easier for VD to detect uh, whether Alice is transmitting or not. But considering the, the intractable expression for the total variation, we have another uh, alternative performance metric or the Cartonist constraint. We have two bounds here for the total variation because the KL divergence is asymmetric, which means the KL divergence from P1 to P0 is different from the KL divergence from P0 to P1. This is a definition, you can see the difference. And accordingly, we have the third, or we can see these two covertness constraints based on the uh, KL divergence. Uh, so the next uh, main uh, technical question I try to briefly answer is, is Gaussian signaling optimal in the context of covered communication? Uh, when we know for uh, AW gene channel, for example, this is the AW gene channel, if we have a Gaussian X, we can maximize the mutual information between X and Xi. So the question is whether a Gaussian X can still maximize the mutual information between X and Xi subject to some uh, coverageness constraint. So I guess some interesting answers here. The first one, if, if we use the KL divergence from P1 to P0 as the coverageness constraint, the answer is yes. So Gaussian signaling is still optimal because it can simultaneously maximize the mutual information and minimize the KL divergence uh, from P1 to P0. But if we change to another um, Cartonis constraint, if you use the KL divergence based on the, from P0 to P1, the answer is a different one. So it's not optimal. So Gaussian signal is not optimal for the coordinates constraint based on the KL divergence from P0 to P1. Uh, the technical proof uh, is uh, in our paper, but I will not uh, detail them here. I use an example to show why the Gaussian signal is not optimal anymore. So I will show the normal, the screw normal distribution or signaling is, can be better than the normal distribution. So normal distribution is a special case of the uh, screw normal distribution with theta equals zero. So from this figure, you can see as, as expected. So the normal distribution can still maximize the mutual information between X and Z. However, it cannot achieve the minimum care divergence from P0 to P1. So you can see if we increase the parameter theta, we can achieve a lower value for the uh, care divergence from P0 to P1. And then if we put them together, we will have a similar result as this figure show. So this is the KL divergence from P0 to P1, and this is the mutual information. So for some values of them, we may have a better performance or better mutual information for the screw normal distribution than the normal distribution. Uh, but the KL divergence current, uh, current constraint is the, is the bound so if we replace, uh, the, replace it with the total variation, we have a similar result. So the first uh, challenge or remains technical problem is what is the optimal signaling X or what's optimal distribution 
of X subject to specific constraints in the context of covered communication. Uh, I'm still working on this problem, but did not get too much uh, progress, to be honest. Um, then I will move to the artificial noise case because artificial noise is uh, all interference is useful in the context of physical layer security. It is also very useful in the context of carbon communication, but uh, many fundamental problems are still open. Um, for example, take the, uh, the block length as finite. So in this case, the distribution of the artificial noise signal or interference signal matters. Um, because it affects the mutual information, also the detection at really. So here is a little bit different from uh, physical layer security. In the context of carbon communication, we normally don't consider the cooperation between the transmitter edits and the uh, noise generator or interference generator. So we, we will have the noise and the both uh, uh, non hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. So that's why you can see the noise will be present at both equations. So the challenge problem is what is optimal noise or interference subject to some constraints or average power constraint or maximum power constraint. So in the context of uh, covered communication, if we bring the block length to infinity, uh, the detection at really will be based on the receive signal power. So you can, you can see under this case, the signal, the artificial noise signal distribution may not matter for really because I will use the power to do the detection. Uh, of course, for the uh, Bob's decoding, it matters, but if we assume that uh, artificial noise or interference is a Gaussian, no Gaussian signal, we would get the SINR for Bob's decoding in this equation. Uh, you can see, so what matters is the transmitter power. Normally, we use a random transmitter power for the artificial noise in covered communication. I mean, for now, in existing works, it is assumed as a uniform distribution, but the optim optimality of it has never been clarified. So uh, the, another challenge here is what's, what is the optimal distribution for the uh, noise power or the interference power if we take and go to infinity. So this is the three uh, challenges I mentioned for this uh, part. Next, uh, I list some reference or most relevant works for this part. If you want to check some details, these are good papers, I think. So next one, I move to multi-hop covered wireless communication. So why do we need uh, multi-hop? Multi because uh, covered communication targets at a large scale shadow and secure wireless networks. Uh, so we need a multiple hop because if we do single hop transmission, for example, from this, this transmitter to the final one, so the long distance single hop transmission requires a high transmitter power, but the current constraint enforces a low power constraint or low power transmission. So if, and we don't know where is the voting really, if it is close to the first transmitter, if we still use a long distance single hop transmission, that does, does not meet the current constraint anymore. Uh, we did some uh, preliminary works here, and also there's a paper on this topic as well, I will list uh, later. So if we fix Alice and Bob at the line, and if we equally uh, put multiple relays between them, and also the distance I, in this simulation, I set the edge equals half uh, D. So we, the distance from this point to really is, ha is uh, half D as well. So you can see there's, there is an optimal value for the number of uh, relays. So there's a trade-off, but this problem is not completely solved. So the challenge is still here. So I list some of them here. So first one is the trade-off between each hop distance and also the number of hops. So we have to optimize the trade-off. And then if we give the freedom to optimize the location and where to put the relays, so we have to determine the optimal locations and also the relaying strategies, whether AF or DF is better in covered communications. 
The next step, we want to examine the coordinate scalability uh, with respect to the transceiver or warden densities. I mean, normally I think the uh, stochastic geometry should put into model Willis location, also the transceiver's location. Uh, considering back the artificial noise, also the interference, we may be able to determine the desired scattering environment for uh, establishing uh, shadow virus networks in this context or in the multiple uh, covered communication context. So I list some works here. There's uh, uh, one, two, three works. Uh, you can check the details if you want to see or want to do some works along this line. So the next step I try to move on is the uh, covered communication with the edge of uh, intelligent reflection surface. So why is it intelligent reflection surface? Not only because it is a hot research topic now, but also I think it, uh, it is very fit, fitful, uh, applicable to this scenario, to the telehealth monitoring scenario. Because normally the RS is for indoor and the indoor sc scattering environment is relatively simple. I mean, compared to the outdoor scenario. But this uh, simple scattering scenario is not good for covered communication. So it limits our covered communication performance. Uh, another, another reason is that the RS is very uh, compatible with other technologies. So normally, we, for now, we use Fujiplex and also beamforming. It's the, it's the transmitter or receiver. But RS is focused on the propagation environment, so it can be compatible with other uh, technologies at the transmitter or receiver. So I do think it is applicable to this scenario to resolve some uh, privacy issues uh, in, the, uh, in the current communication or in the telehealth monitoring scenario. If we use the uh, RS, we will have another degree freedom to do the signal intensification because we want to improve the communication. But also we have the signal cancellation for, for the volume weighting because we, we try to avoid them to detect our transmission. So I think this is a good fit uh, scenario. Uh, we did some uh, uh, simulation or preliminary works uh, this direction as well. Uh, a simple conclusion I find or can demonstrate is if even with uh, single antenna LSVD and Bob, if we have multiple antennas here, we still can achieve a perfect coverness. By perfect coverness, I mean we can uh, completely remove the signal at VLE because this we, we get a mixed signal come from LS and also from RS. But there are some conditions here. Uh, this work is, will, will, will be coming out soon. I hopefully I can share uh, it with, uh, with, with the public. And, uh, but still many challenges or future works uh, should be conducted. The first one is the optimal detector. Uh, as I mentioned at the first uh, or the fundamental calculus constraint, the detection error probability should be uh, minimized. So minimized means that the VD has to have an optimal detector because from a, a conservative point of view, we have to think the enemy is, is very powerful. So the challenge lies that the, the likelihood function or the distribution of the observation at Vili will be a mixed distribution because we have two passes here. One is from Ellis, the other is from the RS. And the more problems comes uh, due to the correlation. So the, the signal are correlated with each other. So another challenge is the trade-off between the signal uh, intensification, or we can see the improvement at Bob, also the signal cancellation and waiting. We have to manage a uh, uh, best trade-off or a good trade-off here. The third one is the beamforming strategy. So what the best or the what's the optimal beamforming beamformer at the RS to conduct covered communication with the RS or with eight or the RS. Uh, the last one is not uh, specific for covered communication, but also for uh, general uh, research in the RS, in the intelligent reflection surface. So how to achieve the channel state information. But in covered communication, it's harder because we have to achieve the channel state information 
in some cases currently not uh, use the pilot because the pilot signal may be public known and then it will be easily detected. Uh, for now, I didn't see uh, technical works on this direction, but there's a, we can call it a maximum paper because this is a general review paper uh, on this direction. But the authors did not do too much work on covered communication. They are expert on intelligent reflection surface. So we can say it is a, a good direction. And also I'm working on two works. Hopefully uh, we will get these two works uh, done very soon. Uh, this is the uh, references here. I, I still I can think I can save some couple minutes for Sean as well. So I list some reference here. Uh, what uh, two, three, and four are all magazine papers. Um, fortunately, we have uh, the pleasure to have one here. Uh, this is our recently published uh, paper. If you want to check the details for this seminar, you can check this uh, magazine paper. If you are think this is a good direction or want to check some details on this direction, the three magazine paper may be a good starting point. Also, this paper, the first one is the we can see the pioneering work for the modern covered communication. It established the skating law and then reopened the research interest in this direction. And also, the, this is the Gaussian signaling paper. The serum one and serum two I mentioned in the seminar in this paper. So you can check the details here. I think uh, that's all. I have a couple minutes for questions.